Hello again and welcome back to Viewpoints on the Line. The third issue we're discussing, well, it's a story coming out of North Carolina, Duke University. It's, well, it's gained certainly North American-wide attention for a good reason. Here you have three college boys that were accused of rape, raping a, 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 a gang raping a black stripper at a late night frat house party. Now, 13 months after those, they've been dropped. It's, um, it's a scandal right now because even the prosecutor was deemed basically ruthless in his pursuit of these three boys. And in fact, according to this article, self-motivated here because apparently he was in politics and he wanted to gain the African-American voters in, in Durham, a city where, according to this article here, of 120,000, where almost 45% of the residents are black. So he went ahead and just went after ruthlessly these boys without any DNA evidence. Now, now it's being said that these boys were now accused wrongfully. And the scars are left. Yeah. But you see, it's interesting the way the, um, the article is done. A tragic rush to accuse is what it's called. But I'm wondering here if perhaps the, what comes next, if it shouldn't be a tragic rush to excuse, because all I'm hearing here is that this girl has mental problems. Now, I, I do not underestimate the issue of mental problems, but I do realize that sometimes it can be difficult to define. You could also find, you could also argue, well, anybody who would do something like this, you can say they have mental problems, but does that excuse them? from any kind of a responsibility. This is something we see in society. Unfortunately, this has been turned into a racial issue. I actually heard somebody argue that these boys are actually guilty and it's some conspiracy to make um, black people look bad. Something else came up. Another article talks about lessons from a witch hunt where it was dug up that 20 years ago something very similar took place by a 15-year-old girl who actually put herself in a garbage bag and claimed that six people had raped her and it turned out to be a bogus as well. Unfortunately, it's been turned into a racial issue. My, my big concern is here is what's going to happen to this prosecutor, the injustice that were done to these boys, and something that really irritates me, these women that come out and scream rape when it didn't happen, they do an injustice to all women that are genuinely attacked and to their credibility. Yes. Huge issue that I find, frankly, disgusting, and it should have never reached this far. I'm going to start with you, John. Well, I'm reminded in this case of the, uh, the old uh, novel of uh, Tom Wolfe, Bonfire of the Vanities, and, and the movie that people may have seen. Also, Witch Hunt. Go back to the Salem Witch Hunt. Mm -hmm. You had hysterical teenage girls who started to make accusations. People paid attention to them, and before it was over, 13 people were executed for a witchcraft, of all things. Um, here again, you've had the same thing. Now, in this day and age, I mean, it's a long history. Uh, of false accusations that people will make for various reasons happens all the time but in this day and age for a prosecutor to go ahead in the days of rape kits swabs and dna testing to go ahead with charges without actually having the most fundamental convicting evidence dna evidence secure before the charges are, are pressed it's inexcusable uh -huh. that man is going to deserves to be sued for every cent he Disbarred has and sued uh, the other thing is the way that, again, and it's a function of the hysteria of society, mm -hmm. and hysteria of society works for different reasons. You know, 300 years ago it was a witchcraft, this time it's, you know, it's purported sexual assault with racial overtones. Mm -hmm. um, the way that Duke University suddenly piled in on top of the, the team these three mm -hmm. boys belong to, the coach was fired, the team was disbanded, everything else. And there are people in the... Uh, and their reputation suffered as well, Duke University. I sure. mean, their enrollment just went well, right down. Well, there are people in the faculty of Duke who again deserve to be hit with a civil lawsuit that's extremely punishing. Yes, yes. You do not engage in prosecution for populist political reasons. We like to think we live in a democracy yeah. where innocent until proven guilty. Well, the, they, had, they had the right to make a big thing out of this case and to pile on these kids. And now they have the right to accept the consequences because. for it. Good point. Well, you know, this, this case is about racism, and it deserves to be about racism, loud and clear. But not racism of three men who were wrongly accused, because clearly they weren't racist. They didn't hurt anybody. The evidence was overwhelmingly the other way, as I understand mm -hmm. it. But there is horrible racism by the prosecutor who has decided that the electorate 
and I think that unjustly decided mm -hmm. that the electorate itself is racist and that they, if Good he point, panders yes. On, on yes. to their color, their, the color of their skin, up to the thing, yeah. that they will somehow vote for him. We see this, by the way, not just in the southern states. This is going on right here in Ontario elections. They, I, I mean, I'm the leader of a party. I have to, in many cases, come to the, come to the task of recruiting someone for a by-election or an election. And I witnessed the most abominable decisions where the parties that are, have seats in the legislature right now pander to what they believe are statistical norms. If, they're, if it's a highly Italian, overwhelmingly Italian riding, they will literally pull someone out of any riding they can if they have you know, top credentials plus they're Italian. Um, and they think that people will vote Italian just because, well, there's mostly Italians here. That's so racist in its, in its uh, foundations. Well, it's, you know, it, it's political posturing, which, yeah. which we know we could argue against, but it becomes such unscrupulous politics I mean, for somebody to play a, a sad case as this and not yeah. care about the reputation of the boys, and, and to the money that was put into these cases, yeah. well, let, let's it's be, ridiculous. Let's be honest. I mean, it's, it's not just race. I mean, uh -huh. if there's an accusation of, of rape, I mean, most men... There, there are many. There are many problems that I see attached well, sure, to this sure. particular case. I mean, it, if, if I was living in, in Duke, even being who I am, I probably would have gone... Holy cats, these guys deserve to get hit. I mean, there's a contempt that most men of every race reserve for someone who actually commits sexual assault. But that's, again, what the justice system is supposed to be for, the checks and balances. In this case, it worked because these guys could afford good lawyers. You know, God help them if they could only afford a public defender, which is why, on the other hand, sometimes you see particularly horrendous crimes in the U.S. and, and more blacks disproportionately on death row would otherwise be the case. But again, the prosecution has a duty to make sure the evidence is sound. And mm -hmm. this time, mm -hmm. they clearly failed. Yeah. You know, I, I like to support the side of justice, but I'm going to mention something here that I, I don't think is addressed enough in society. When, when women start making these accusations, it's against all women, uh, I said that earlier, who are genuinely attacked. Do you think that follow-up charges should be placed on women that make these accusations against men. I, I want to hear what your point of view is. I mean, you're going to get some really diehard feminists out there that are going to say no, but I, I, I mean, I'm talking here, it's, it, to me, it's not an issue whether you're a man or a woman. It's an issue of justice. And even if you want to look at it on behalf of women, justice for the women who are genuinely attacked. Do you think these women should be charged they after should, doing this? I think they should only be charged if there's evidence that they intentionally uh, laid a phony information. That's what I mean. Yeah, if, and that's going to be difficult. It'll be an exceptional case where that's true. You have to be very careful about charging people who, who bring information because sometimes the only reason that the person walked, the only reason they got uh, off the hook was because of a technicality, a charter issue, etc. Um, so you have to be careful about assuming... What if that it's proved and they come out afterward and they say, okay, fine. They're caught because this happens, and I know this, yes. where they're caught. Their story doesn't add up, and they get to the point where they break down and they say, okay, fine, I made up the whole thing. Do you think that they should be dealt with by the law after as, that, or as, it should just be let go? As, as harshly as possible, and doubly so if it's a police officer involved doing it. Mm -hmm. um, yes, if it's, if it's a police officer or, or somebody else in a position of trust laying false charges. For other people, you, you really have to... It's a variety of circumstances. It, it is a very human problem that you, you put your foot wrong. You know, whatever really happened in this case, you know, that say she's out too late, her boyfriend is getting, or I'm not thinking about this case in particular, angry, and she says, oh, well, you know, uh, I was raped. What? And then, and then, you know, you commit yourself to a lie and you, you follow it. It's a very human mistake to make. It happens enough times. So. I'm not even talking about those subtleties. I know that it exists where false accusations are made against people. Attention. Even if you go out there, okay? I'm, we're talking about an issue here regarding a, a, a sex assault. Yeah. But it happens in other areas where somebody says some crime was committed against them and it didn't happen or somebody, you know, gives some false witness against somebody else. But should shouldn't these people be dealt with? Like this girl, yeah. should she be let off? Should she be let off and just... Well, she's, I don't she's know. a head case. And I, I don't know enough about the details. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can see, you know, if, if this was deliberately con concocted, if she was looking for personal advantage. Yes. Yeah, maybe. But it should be followed up. You this can, is something that needs to be looked into, I believe. Yeah, there, there are deliberately done uh, criminal acts all the time for which people 
uh, don't necessarily go to prison because they are mentally ill, if, for example, if they're clinically ins well, insane by the legal standard. Mm -hmm. And those same standards, I think, would apply to p any person who, who brings a false information intentionally. Uh, but that's a strong, I mean, you better, be, you better have your evidence mm -hmm. lined up that you were, mm -hmm. you were insane because otherwise, no, no mercy. You're, you're, you know, that's, that's probably the worst thing you can do to anyone is to bear, bear false witness against them. And well, I, their I, reputation is ruined. Uh, not only that, but it, it, it really undermines the entire system of justice. In fact, yes, it it's does. a slap in the face to the justice system itself. It is. It yeah. is. And we're out of time for today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both so much for joining me.